<laughs> that was beautiful. Hello, Ron. I'm Hi. Jennifer of The Interview. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming on our show, The Interview. Sure. Well, that was beautiful. Um, to be honest, I can't tell you how long it's been since I uh, was able to feel the Christmas spirit, but yes, I felt that Christmas spirit, and uh, that was a beautiful piece. Great, thanks. <laughs> the Interview's Christmas Special with jazz pianist Ron Branton. Ron Branton, called a poetic musician, is a pianist and composer who presents lyrical music. His ties with Korea were formed after he was invited to a jazz festival in Korea in 1998. When I moved over here, I was naturally curious. I felt that was an opportunity, something that I could maybe make a difference at doing. For the past 15 years, he has been communicating with music enthusiasts through his year-end concerts. Stay tuned to hear jazz pieces presented by Ron Branton. Could you maybe tell us about the concert, Jazz Christmas, yeah. which you'll be playing in? Well, uh, we have two concerts this year. We've got one in Apkjongdong at the Changchong Art Hall. Uh -huh. And then on Christmas Day, we're playing down at the Sejong Chamber Music Hall. Ah, I see. And uh, both places are lovely to play. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that you've been um, putting together this concert, Jazz Christmas, for many, many years annually. Mm. And this year will be your 15th concert, wow, yeah, Jazz it's Christmas. Amazing. <laughs> now, how did you come to put together this concert, Jazz Christmas, the very first time? Well, at that time I moved here, there was not much going on Christmas-wise. There's uh -huh. no decorations. At best, Korean families might have supper together, mm -hmm. dinner. So I wanted to do something to commemorate Christmas, at least for myself. Mm -hmm. And the perfect way to do that was to do a concert, do a gig, play Christmas music, yes. and maybe people would show up. Yeah. And it seemed to have become rather popular. Mm -hmm. This, your very first concert jazz Christmas was put together even before the boom of jazz in Korea. Oh yeah. Um, I'm curious as to know uh, what people's response, reactions uh, was like. Um, How did people respond to the first, very first concert? It was positive. Um, mm -hmm. They seemed to really like it and much to my surprise, um, I wasn't sure how people would take it, but I figured we put on a show, we play and mm -hmm. see what happens. And it was good. It was good. There are songs that have always been included in your repertoire, I understand. Mm. Um, uh, how many tunes are there? How many pieces? And is there a reason as to why you always include uh, these pieces? Well, yeah. For example, I, I do Vince Graldi tunes. As you know, he was the his jazz pianist really funky swinging jazz pianist that did all the music for Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. Charlie Brown, it's Christmas Charlie Brown. And I do that because that's another part of my past was Charlie Brown. Oh. In that cartoon, it's Christmas Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. So I do pieces that he wrote for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And they're very pretty, very beautiful. And um, in addition to that, I always like to do a uh, kind of New Orleans funky style version of Jingle Bells. Uh, a funky style of Jingle Bells. Feel, feel, yeah, feel free to play like for Yeah, it's kind of like this kind of... That kind of... That kind of feeling. Uh -huh. It is funky. <laughs> that kind of... Ah, uh, yes. Boom. And... Um, it's just a fun piece to play. Mm -hmm. um, it's some of the, It's a real challenge to take music that's very square and do something interesting to, mm -hmm. with it to take it somewhere else. So that's always been a challenge for me as an arranger is how to get inside of a piece of music right. and make something fresh with mm -hmm. it while keeping to the original spirit of the piece. Ron Branton has been performing his jazz Christmas concerts since 2001. At the annual concert, a quartet with a pianist, saxophonist, bassist, and drummer present jazz versions of Christmas carols.
The house is always packed at Ron Branton's Jazz Christmas, considered one of the most iconic year-end concerts in Korea. And every winter, it presents the audiences with unforgettable memories. Um, was there maybe uh, a very memorable or a special incident that occurred uh, during any of your uh, jazz Christmas concerts? Something that you remember till this day? There was one that one. was really like cool, and um, one gentleman wanted to propose marriage to his uh, girlfriend. Oh, how romantic! So I called her to the stage, and she doesn't know what's going to happen. And I tell the audience, and now I'm going to make her sing. And of course, she becomes very upset and a little embarrassed. And uh -huh. I said, no, no, just list, I have something I want to play for you. Mm -hmm. I played her a lovely song by Elvis Presley, one of these beautiful ballads. Mm -hmm. And then he came up and um, read a poem I played in the background. He proposed and gave oh. her a ring. And it was a really lovely time. Did she say yes? I think she did, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure she did. It would be embarrassing to say, no. You're like, oh. Yeah, oh, that sounds romantic. I wish somebody did that for me as well. <laughs> so we've now been talking about your winter concerts, the mm. jazz Christmas concert that's held around winter season. Mm. I also heard of a kind of a summer festival as well. Mm. Um, it's called the Summer Nights Jazz. Yes. Uh, it's a concert as well. Mm. Could you tell us about the Summer Nights Jazz Concert? It's a concert that I do a lot of jazz arrangements of Cayo. Uh -huh. uh, I do standards as well. Um, but I try to make it something different, something that you normally are not going to hear on a gig if you go to a club or something like mm -hmm. that. So um, that's one reason I started doing um, arrangements of Cayo. I do some originals as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just um, a fun concert series, if you will. I play um, jazz versions of everything from Mokpo um, Inunmul uh -huh. to um, Kim Kwang Sok. I've done his work. Uh, there's just a lot of Kayo that many foreigners like myself have not heard. Right. So when I go through, I take a score and I read down a whole lot of things, mm -hmm. it gives me a chance to kind of catch up with what's happened in Korea while the rest of the world was doing something else. Right. I mean, there are many, many different kinds of genres. Uh, as you mentioned, there's mm. Kayo, like the Korean uh, pop, would you call mm. it? Uh, there's the trot, mm -hmm. trot uh, the classical Korean songs. Oh, so yeah. um, you kind of put these tunes together and mm. play them. And I understand that um, uh, a few of your favorite Korean musicians are mm. late Kim Gwang Seok, as you mentioned, sure. and also Yoo Jae Ha. Mm. Um, do they happen to be your only favorite Korean musicians, or do you have tons and tons more? Uh, wow, there's quite a few good writers. Uh, Hong Nam Pa is an um, older writer that's mm -hmm. done some nice work. I've done some of his pieces, like Bong Sung Hwa. For a children's album, we did his Muchige, the Muchige Rainbow. Muchige Rainbow. Which was fun. That was almost like a, a homage to John Coltrane as well. Mm. Usually, I go through a book of scores and I play music and try to find things that catch my ear. Mm -hmm. For example... Etc. Etc. It's a uh, Kim Kwang Sok song. Ah, Kim Kwang Sok. Yes. I mean, obviously, you have a lot of interest in Korea and our culture. Um, mm. I mean, did something motive and what inspired you, or how did this all begin for you? Well, let's see. When I moved over here, I was naturally curious, so um, I started doing reading. As a musician, 
I wanted to listen to music to find out what has been done, what mm -hmm. was done. And at some point, uh, it became obvious I could go back maybe and use older music and do arrangements. You know, it's like in America, mm -hmm. um, people even now will take pieces from the American songbook. They'll take um, anything from Irving Berlin or whoever, and they'll do new arrangements. Mm -hmm. So uh, it makes sense to go back and take old tunes and do new arrangements. I just found that um, many times in Korea, musicians don't really do that. Mm. They want to make something new, so there's yeah. this focus on newness and novelty. Uh -huh. So um, I wanted to go back and do something different. I felt that was an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, something that I could maybe make a difference at doing. Do you remember the first song that you worked on? The first oh, Korean song mm, that you worked on? Ooh, that's tough. Wow. <laughs> well, how long was this? Like, I mean, how, how long ago was this? Wow, that's like, uh, gosh, that's at least 16, 16 years. Oh, that is seven, a long time you know, ago. So when did you first come to Korea? How long has it like, been? What was that, 1998, I believe it was. Oh, oh wow. I think it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a little while. And what brought you to Korea? Uh, well, I had gotten married. I had a choice to stay in America or to try something different, and I elected to try something different simply because uh, I felt I should do it. Um, regret is something I don't want to live with. Mm -hmm. So I, maybe I would have regret having made a change. And besides where I was living in D.C., um, business environment is very boring, frankly. Ah. <laughs> so uh, I felt it was a good opportunity for change, just mm -hmm. to try it at least. And it turned out to be a lot more fun and better than I thought mm -hmm. it would be. Now, you've been a jazz pianist since your 20s, mm. and um, uh, you have not released a single album until last year. Yeah. Is that correct? So, mm -hmm. first of all, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, tell us a bit about that album. I understand the uh, title of the album is called Water Bull. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a special meaning behind the title of the album? Well, I wanted to create a series of pieces that were like um, vignettes or uh, paintings of a, uh, a place, in this case Korea, I mm. wanted to create little portraits from my experiences here in country. And uh, I picked water because I was thinking of the four sacred elements, uh, for example, earth, wind, fire, water, mm -hmm. and I thought I would start maybe with water. Mm -hmm. And there are many scenes that I've seen here in Korea that have to do with water. Water fields, um what else? Uh, sonagi, you know, like tor torrential ah, rains, yes. uh, flooding, mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of things like this. And uh, I even put in a nunmul, that's oh. eye water, literally translated to English, tears. or tears. Yeah. So um, that worked out really well. That was the la last tune that I wrote to. Oh, tears? Yeah. Oh. I was half awake on the couch sleeping, I heard mm -hmm. it, so I jumped up and wrote it down and oh, wow. worked it out. So that, that one came quickly. Did you write something about perhaps uh, well torrential rain, um, like tangma, how it like pours during the rainy season here in Korea, monsoon season? Yeah, I had had to do a piece about that. Did something called Temple Rain. Mm -hmm. I did this um, concert at a uh, temple, and it was raining so hard that we played kind of inside with some tents outside for the audience, uh -huh. and it was um, it was a lovely time, but it was wet. Uh. So we. From that, I wrote Temple Rain. Mm -hmm. 
But a lot of people show up for that. Yeah, I was surprised. Despite I liked all the it. Rain. Mm. Yeah, it was very nice. I heard that you had um, much difficulties while you were putting this album together. What kind of difficulties did you well, experience? Well, other than um, making me crazy trying to get all this written in practice and all that, uh -huh. uh, had family members that were passing away. Oh. My mother came down with cancer. Um, I lost uh, at least two friends, um, one way or the other. And mm -hmm. uh, it was just a very trying time. Uh, my grandmother lived to 103, but finally passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so it was just a challenging time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a very difficult time for you. Uh, but did music help you in any way? Did it help you too? Uh, y yes, it keeps my mind in a better place, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, so yes, it did help. Um, that always helps me, I think, um, in my life, yeah. Are there any songs that you composed or put together uh, based on your experiences here in Korea? Uh, yes. yes, other than all of those from the Mul album, mm -hmm. um, I'm constantly um, reminded of certain things and I gain inspiration from many situations mm -hmm. or things that I see. Right. Um, I even take inspiration from photography. They kind of like tell a story mm -hmm. and sometimes from that story I can take, um, I, f I hear music when I see them, yeah, mm -hmm. so that helps. Before our interview, we actually briefly talked about how you spend your uh, free time, I guess. Mm. Um, you do travel a lot. Mm. Uh, and you told me that you go on the subway or the bus, you stop at any stop and just walk around a lot, and that's how you get uh, inspired as well. You sure. get inspiration to write your tunes and oh, pieces yeah. as well. Oh, in, yeah. In Seoul, there's many places you can visit, mm -hmm. many places you can just go and walk. And uh, I'm always surprised at the variety in the landscape and the people that I meet and run into. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not a boring place. Maybe some subway stops are boring, maybe. <laughs> but um, there are quite a few stops uh, in older neighborhoods that are pretty interesting. Mm, with old architecture and like mm -hmm. old houses, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Uh. Um, some places. Um, are actually changing and you get to see some of the change and sometimes it's really interesting to see um, the new shops and interesting places that are in these areas mm -hmm. so yeah all right then um maybe you could uh play a tune for us any song uh any of your favorites that you want to play for us a song that you were inspired to write or put together or is there a song that you could play for us right now? <laughs> uh, yes, I could play something that I wrote a few months ago, mm -hmm. something that um, I was inspired to write called Half Said. Half Said. Yeah, and I had um, seen a photo and the subject of the photo spoke a lot to me when I looked at the person. I got a lot from it, but I felt that there was so much that was left unsaid. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, reminded me how like in Korea, you know, Koreans don't like to say everything. They want you to have some kind of nunchi, just mm. an understanding. Yes. And that's the kind of feeling I get from that photo. Ah. Yeah. Could you please play half said for us? Sure. Okay.
there's a musical that you put together this year. Yeah. Um, you've created a musical called Tiger. Mm. Could you maybe tell us about that musical? Sure. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, um, since um, my um, spouse works a great deal with musical shows, um, I felt it was also an opportunity to write more in the way of musicals. So I wanted to do something that was uniquely Korean for this market, but something that you could grow into a global market. Uh -huh. So instead I picked a contemporary theme How about a scientist that is looking for the last tiger in Korea. I, I got this idea because I read a story about a uh, scientist trying to go out and look for tigers in Korea. Mm -hmm. Many people thought he was crazy or mistaken and he said well if you don't look you won't find any. Right. And I realized that the guy is a kind of odd kind of hero. Mm -hmm. And it's something very Korean, very contemporary. Mm -hmm. So I, we want to do something like that. Ah. You incorporated the rhythms of samulori into the music as well. Some, yeah. Um, how did that come to happen? Well, I, I just spent time putting my ear to much of it. I talked to some really fine uh, samul players. Mm -hmm. They would demonstrate some of the rhythms and I didn't expect to exactly duplicate authentic rhythms because that's maybe a little too uh, too much. Mm -hmm. But um, there's certain qualities to the rhythm, like um, a real focus on the upbeat, like uh, uh, on that upbeat that's characteristic of a lot of sound that mm -hmm. I hear. So um, I would use some of that. Ron Branton was the composer and arranger for the original musical, Tiger. The musical centers on a zoologist who travels across the country in search of a native tiger in the wild. Despite betrayals and controversies against him, he succeeds in his endeavors. Of all the songs Branton has composed, Land of the Tiger, which was one of the musical numbers, has a dynamic rhythm that's characteristic of traditional Korean music. Branton wanted to turn people's attention to tigers because to Koreans, they are more than just animals. They represent the spirit of Koreans. He collaborated with his wife, who composed the lyrics, finally completing their project after five years. The musical was held earlier this year, and it received acclaim for putting a modern twist on a traditional theme. How was it to work with um your spouse, your, your wife on such a big project. Yeah, well, as you know, it's dangerous to mix business with personal relationships mm. because um, it can come to blows, maybe. Uh -huh. um, and, well, yeah, it was a little stressful, maybe, sometimes. But still, uh, in this sense, um, there was a lot of learning and inspiration that went on from this. For example, mm. we would talk about character development what kind of character is this person? What kind of music should they have? How should this person grow and develop inside of the story? Mm -hmm. And by talking about the qualities of the story this way, it allowed her to uh, write a convincing script and dialogue. Uh -huh. Also helped me to put together some of the pieces for some of the characters, mm -hmm. which define them. Because musically, I think of the person, I hear music. I mean, I don't think of lyrics, for example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I actually would write pieces first and then tell her, this piece is about such and such. Please write some gasa, write some uh, lyric. And she would do that. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe it's a little backwards to write that way, but uh, for me, it works very well. When I'm writing, I'm, I'm always thinking of uh, drama. I'm thinking about climax. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of piece is it? Is it a big climax, smaller? Like, where is it going? Mm -hmm. So I always have this stage in my head when I'm working in that ah. arena. Yeah. So a lot of uh, people start from maybe the lyrics and then kind yeah. of build from the lyrics. But you're saying that you kind of begin with the music and yeah. then... Um, you move on to, I guess, adding the lyrics later on. Yeah, because sometimes that's easier. As you know, in Korean, there's a lot of consonants at the end, so if I have to change a, a line, a melodic line, uh -huh. it's not horribly difficult. Mm, I see. 
So sometimes to facilitate a lyric, it's easier for, to, for me to make it change in the music. Mm. Uh, I mean, with Gershwin, with Ira and uh, George Gershwin, they it'd be the opposite. I would would give him the lyric. It's uh -huh. very da 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 four four bar four bar, right. and it made it easier for George to write music like mm -hmm. that, and he did. So, but. Um, if he had to write like I write, the I don't know what around. he would do. He could do it. I mean, the guy was great, mm -hmm. but it would be very different from how he worked with his brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand that you also kind of rearranged children's songs um, with winter themes into jazz. Now, yeah. how, how did you decide to do that? Well, originally I did a lovely project with a classical singer, Kim Won Jung, uh -huh. and we took um, children's songs, Korean children's songs from 1936 to 1970, and did these interesting arrangements where it's a jazz arrangement, it's jazz quartet, if you will, with mm -hmm. guitar and whatnot, but the singer is very classical, and by combining that, it's a um, chance to give a fresh hearing to this music mm -hmm. in an, unus an unusual uh, genre. Uh -huh. And uh, it was very nice. And some of that music I found had to do with Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, Koreans write music about everything, the sun, the moon, yes. abuji, omanim. Yeah. But they don't write that much about winter, I guess, mm. because they don't really like it. But <laughs> They may write about I found some. snow and the winter season. Kulnamu, like ah, winter tree, for yes. example, and uh, footprints in the snow and things mm -hmm. like this. And the writing's very good. I mean, the writers are mature composers, so mm -hmm. it's nice to take that music and do original arrangements of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, when we talk about Christmas, there are a lot of memories that mm -hmm. um, we have growing up and uh, spending Christmas with family and friends. Could you maybe tell us about your most memorable Christmas so far? Wow. Well, it's funny. When I think of Christmas growing up, I think of how sometimes it would snow out in Tennessee where uh -huh. we were. And my brother and his friends would go out in the woods somewhere. At that time, no one was living around there, and they'd go out in the woods and find a tree and cut one down to bring oh. back for the Christmas tree. Uh -huh. So it's very kind of old-fashioned, yeah. Yeah, that's the way it should be, I think. So you and your brothers would decorate the Christmas tree. I remember when I was little, we would have all these gifts under uh -huh. the Christmas tree. It's hard to see that these yeah. days. Did you cheat and try to look at the gift? Yes, I did. <laughs> all the time, every year. I would wake up very early in the morning and peek, yes. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any special Christmas plans for this year? Uh, to play very well Christmas music and also other songs. Mm -hmm. uh, to spend some time with my friends mm -hmm. and what family I can find. Yes. And um, to call everybody up I know in the States to bother them and say Merry Christmas on the phone. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they won't feel like they're bothered. Now, I'm sure that many of your fans that are watching right now um, are looking forward to uh, your jazz Christmas concerts to come. And I'm curious, uh, for how much longer, for how many more years do you plan to um, hold these jazz Christmas concerts? Oh, wow. That's a tough question. <laughs> um, well, uh, well, as long as it's fun. I mean, if it becomes less than fun, then maybe I should try something else. I mean, I feel as an artist, it's very important to always reinvent what you're doing mm -hmm. and reinvent yourself. And if you sit too long on one thing, you are surely going to be disappointed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe is there a, maybe a plan or plans or any mm. future projects that you're working on right now? Yeah, I'm working on a uh, trio kind of uh, endeavor where I do all kayo but just like piano trio uh -huh. and I want to try out some really crazy ideas and do some things which are a little uh, edgy mm -hmm. if you will with tunes people think they know but they're hopefully going to be surprised. Okay, um, how long do you expect this to take? I mean how much longer or for wow. how long do, should we wait in order to have the uh Yes, opportunity to listen. Ooh, to <laughs> well, I should work on it as quickly as possible, uh -huh. and um, that's my plan. 
Uh, I found a really good place locally for recording that kind of a, a live trio gig, oh, so mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, the place has a wonderful Busendorfer Grand, so, uh, ooh, yeah. It's, you sound it's, excited. <laughs> well, you get a piano like that, there's like, uh, you know, nothing to stop you other uh. than your own fingers, so, uh. yeah. All right. Okay, then, uh, since we do have to say goodbye, I had a wonderful time. Thank you once again Thank for you. joining us on our show. Um, could we, I would love to be delighted with one of your tunes. Okay. Could you play something um, for us? Sure. I want to do something called Blue Christmas, um, written a good while ago, 47, mm -hmm. and made famous by Elvis Presley in 1957 on his <gasps> Christmas album. And it's uh, just a new piece. I haven't done this one before for Christmas, so it's an, something new. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Blue Christmas. Thank you. Mm -hmm.